that's what it says. So it says the webinar is now broadcasting to all attendees. Hold on, I'm gonna put it on pause. Oh. Yes. Okay, so uh, this is the October 22nd work session of the Village of Mamaroneck Zoning Board of Appeals. So I think the purpose of the work session, and, and Will, you can correct me if there's anything else, is to discuss applications that we will be hearing on at the next meeting among the board members to see if we have any issues or anything we want to discuss before we hear, hear the application or in order to you know, narrow down some issues. So hopefully it will make it shorter. Second, it's we can do this, use this meeting as the opportunity to discuss some of the closed applications so that maybe we can get draft resolutions prepared for the meeting, the meeting itself. And third is to discuss some of the other administrative things like the letter and our comments on proposed changes to the law. So all the things that don't need um, at the moment public input. Anything else, Will, that you see as the purpose of this meeting? Uh, no, that's it, Madam Chair, you covered everything. Okay, so, um, so the first, the, so the first application will be, we'll start with the, the items that are on for public hearing. Now the purpose is this is this, we can discuss anything we want. And you know, and if there's anything in here that we want the applicant to discuss at the public hearing, we can tell the applicant that now, so the applicant will be prepared for the public hearing. Presumably this will help the applicant prepare better and will have a faster, better, more efficient public hearing. Okay, so uh, Roaster Cafe, we adjourned it. Uh, does anybody have anything they want to discuss about it now before the public, the adjourned public hearing? There was some tree damage. We were trying to find out about that, as I recall. We were, and also there were open violations. He was going to close the violations. Uh, so if nobody has anything else, then we'll just move on to the next. Robin, did you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay, thanks. Um, okay, if nobody has anything else, we'll move on to the next. The next oh. is... One of the things is the tree damage was that they had wrapped these trees up with garlic, with uh, vines and everything. They're still up. Well, if they're listening, which I hope they are, they should remove whatever they are required or is supposed to remove so that when we hear the, when we open the meeting for the public hearing um, in two weeks, you can tell us that you've done what needs to be done. Okay. Um, next item is 600 Lorraine Street. And the issue that was, that we were discussing was whether or not they could decrease the additional decrease the additional FAR, FAR that they were requesting to lower the amount of floor area that they were requesting and the size of the buildings. And they were going to go back and look into whether or not that was feasible and how much it would cost them and what it would do to their project. Uh, so we'll hopefully on the hearing on, you know, in two weeks, we will have the answer to that. Does anybody else have any other comment or anything else they want to discuss about it? Uh, just for just Madam Chair, so you know, uh, just to refresh, um, it was a reduction of, of FAR, like you said, uh, to anything 15% or greater, correct? Well, that was what some of the board members had requested, right. yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, just so you know, we uh, planning staff reached out to the applicant to let the applicant know about the work session for tonight. I don't see that the applicant on. So that's just so you know. All right, well, presumably the, I mean, the applicant knows what we wanted because they had said they would go back and check. So uh, we'll have to hope that they are looking at it and will come back to us at the public hearing with the answer to the question. Okay, if nobody else has any on the board has anything else they wanna discuss about this, we can move on. Uh, next item three is a 100 Boston Post Road, which was LUM and they have, notified the, the village that they have withdrawn their application. So that is off the agenda and we will not be discussing it anymore. That was easy. Okay, the next one is um, 
Number four on the agenda is 805 Mamaroneck Avenue, the Chipotle, and they will be in, they want to a variance in order to install a second accessory sign that's larger than is permitted. Uh, the, the materials were submitted. Does anybody have anything they want to discuss about this now? Again, we're going to have a public hearing and obviously you can ask all your questions. If there's anything that you want to either A, discuss now or raise for the applicants, you know. Yeah, they're, they're looking to put a sign in twice the size of what they're entitled to. Yeah, but we're not, dis we're not discussing the merits right now, right? We're just we discussing can discuss the merits. We can absolutely oh, okay. discuss the merits. We can we can't make a decision. We haven't had the 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 um we haven't had the public hearing, but we can certainly discuss what our concerns are because in theory, if we discuss now what our concerns are, then when the applicant comes, it will be better prepared to address them rather rather than first hearing them and then thinking about them. This will make, should make it more efficient. So if you have concerns. Doug's concern apparently is it's big. And so if you have additional concerns, you should raise them now. You know, I mean, if you think about it, it's twice the size of what they're entitled to. I personally don't have a problem with it. It's just their name. It is a name and I don't honestly have a problem with it. That's just my personal view. So, you know, um, everybody will think about it. So Meg, did you have something you wanted to discuss about it? I lost you for a little while, so I'm sorry. I did the last part. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what if I said was, lost you. What I said me. was, is there something about the Chipotle application that you wanted to discuss now? Right. Um, my concern is, um, that I know this is the second sign. This is an additional sign, so it's a second sign. So. Um, also, the placement of the building so close onto the street. So when you have such a large sign, two signs, um, I think to me, it's working against what the the standards of the code was about in terms of of not getting um, over commercialized. I don't know what exactly the right word is. I'm going to think about that, um, but not to have such broad advertising um, filling up our view when we're driving down a public street. Um, and the fact that there's two signs bothers me as well as this extra large sign. Mm -hmm. I agree. Do they, do, they, do they explain why they need the second sign? Yes, it, it's in their application. They explain why they need it. They say that the um, they're allowed a second sign. This is just bigger than they're allowed. And it's because the second sign is facing just the way it's facing. Rather than repeat it, why don't you read what they have explained? Well, I will. In their application, okay. you can ask them questions about it at the meeting. Yeah, so I will be looking, I'm sorry, I wasn't prepared for this. I didn't know this was the intent of this. So um, I will read it. Um, I, I will be reading very closely when you are allowed to have a second sign. Um, so I will look at their explanation and I'll be looking at the code for that. So, but I still have to do that. Okay. Um, so, yeah, just just uh, staff, um, I, I, I have one suggestion and the board can weigh it, you know, however you want to deal with it. But perhaps because the sign is dealing with aesthetics and that's part of the your assessment, um, would it be beneficial to seek the BAR's opinion as it relates to this matter? One, because I, of the aesthetics and two, because again, one of the criteria that your board has to assess is impacts on neighborhood character and whether or not it's a change to the character. And again, the VAR is sort of an expert in that. So that's just a suggestion. Every variance we grant has to make a determination as to whether it is consistent with the character of the neighborhood. I don't think that there's anything thing in particular about the fact that it's a sign that we need additional input from the VAR, um, unless somebody on the board disagrees with me. And we've never done that before. And I don't want to start that as a new practice. So unless a lot of people on the board disagree with me. That's how I would I would say we don't need their input. No, I would agree we don't need their input, but I also, the sign is double the size of what they're permitted. They already have one. They don't need one double. I don't want to see Central Avenue in Mamaronek. Okay. So uh, I, I don't think we need the BAR, but I would like to thank Will. It was a good idea just to think if there was any other. Body we could triangulate with for some more information. So I appreciate the 
the effort, but I don't think we need to go to the BAR. Well, I think the BAR is going to have to look at it anyway, but that's beside the point. I think the size is what's is what's dictating my issues. Okay, Abby, did you have something? Uh, yeah, so I was going to say, like you, Robin, I don't really have a problem with this, but I do also want to mention that in their memo, they point out, which I think is something we should all note and think about, that apparently the ZBA grant is similar variance to other storefronts on the Maranek Ave, including Enterprise, Allstate, I'm just reading this out, Sterling, National Bank. So I think, you know, we also should be looking at our precedent. Um, and, you know, I, I, that needs to be verified, right? But um, I did want to point that out. So I guess we would ask Will to check uh, in their application, they do list other signs that they say have gotten similar variances. So Will, if you would provide for the board copies of those other variants approvals. And, and then if we are gonna get that list, can the setback of those buildings, because that concerns me, the, the proximity to the street. Yeah, if, if whatever's in the variants we should have, and if you know the, the other thing, the setback information takes requesting as well. Okay. Okay, anything else from board members? on this before we move on? Okay. Um, so those are all the... No, there's a... There should be another public hearing, which I don't see on my agenda, but I know we have it. So I'm going to... Will, what happened to the... Um... It's on. I don't know what... what... I don't know. Oh, it's under administrative actions. It should not be under administrative actions. So to clarify, item five under administrative actions is East Coast North Properties. That will be a public hearing. It will be a public hearing to discuss the DEIS. Now, I, 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 I would bet that many of you have not yet read the revised DEIS. I don't know. Um, but that's my guess. It was big. We only got a, you know, we didn't get it that long ago. So the point, what, what's happening, uh, so they have submitted their revised draft DEIS and Ashley will bring us up to speed on what's going on. So they have submitted their revised draft DEIS and they will be at the public hearing on, now we were, oh, they submitted the materials for their revised DEIS on October 14th. Is that correct, Will? That's correct, yes. So that was the date they submitted it. Uh, there will be a pub, the public hearing will be open for the applicant or for anyone else who wants to discuss the revised DEIS. We're not discussing the variance at the public hearing, only the, DE, the revised DEIS. I have a question. Um, Ashley, hang on one sec, Doug, and then you can ask your question. Ashley will, the next thing will be after Doug, we answer Doug's question is, for Ashley to present, sort of bring us up to speed on where we are and what our time limits are. Okay, go ahead, Doug. If I am not mistaken, their initial variance that was granted to them called for them to provide 58 parking spaces. They only provided, according to this, 25. So if their application initially and their variance initially was for 58 parking spaces. They needed to provide 58 parking spaces. The question I have is, and I'll ask Ashley, are we, can we, if that in fact is correct, I'm pulling it off memory. If that in fact is correct, can they actually put this application before us when they were in violation initially of, of their variance? I think that would be a question for Michael rather than for Ashley, but I will say we did, you did raise that, as I recall, at the public hearing on this. So yes. I don't remember what the answer was, but I do, not this, not this question, but the issue about how many they provided. I do remember you answered that. My guess would be we can hear this because this is a, an application for something different. But Michael, do you see any reason we cannot consider this expansion if they're not in compliance with their original approval? Michael, you're unmuted. 
I don't I don't see anything off the top of my head, but I'm not sure I'm prepared to answer that tonight. Um, I'd have to look into it. I'd have to look for an answer to, to really nail it down. Okay, so Michael, if you would look into that so we have an answer by the public hearing and Ash, okay, Doug, and then Ashley, if you would please go through the DEIS, where we are, what happened, what was going through time, et cetera. Sure, so let me just start from, you know, when the secret process really started. Um, a positive declaration was issued by this board back in July of 2019. Um, the, the board adopted a scoping document, which is essentially right. the outline of the DEIS in September of 2019. And the applicant submitted its first copy of the preliminary DEIS on December 30th, 2019. Mm -hmm. uh, this board had a, a meeting in January, on January 21st, 2020. At that meeting, you reviewed a memo that was prepared by ACARAF, and each of the board members provided their own comments on the completeness of the DEIS. Uh, you declared that the document was incomplete on February 6, 2020, and there is a memo dated February 7th, 2020, that summarizes in writing all of the uh, comments on the DEIS uh, that was the basis for your determination that it was incomplete. And then that, that memo included a CARES memo, it included the memo from the village engineer, and it included a summary of all of the board's comments at the meeting on both the 21st and the meeting on the 6th. Um, so they have now submitted a revised DEIS uh, the, the official date of that submission, we understand to be October 14th, because that is the date that the village received mm -hmm. all of the hard copies. Mm -hmm. uh, so that starts the clock on this next round of completeness review. You have 30 days from the date of submission to, to prepare a completeness review. Um, and, and in this round, the only thing that you're allowed to look at are whether or not they addressed all the comments that were in that initial, in that memo, um, dated February 7th. Wow. You can also add comments on anything that is new. So if they were, in this case, I don't believe they made any significant changes to the site plan, but as an example, if, if they had gone and added a second building, you would be allowed to have new comments on that building, but that's not the case here. Um, um, the, what they submitted, just clarifying, they didn't redline this, correct? I didn't look at it yet, but they didn't redline it. They, they are, were supposed to provide you with a red, uh, a full copy of the document in a clean version, because those are typically a little easier to read, but they were also supposed to provide you with a packet that had a red line of the word, like just the, the text, red line text, so you could see where it changed. Did, did, the, did you all receive that? No. Will, no. did we receive it? No. Not, whatever you received not, in the hard copy is what you received, so if then, it wasn't in there then we did not receive everything and their submittal is not complete. Would that be correct Correct statement, Ashley? Yes, that was specifically requested that they provide a red line. It was supposed to write two, two versions, one a clean version, then one a red line version. Okay, so, so it would make your review easier. They did not provide a red line version. They didn't comply with our requirements. And in fact, their submittal is not complete. So October 14th is no longer the date. The date will be from whatever date they provide that red line. Yeah, but the question comes out, can anybody put in an application when they had a variance that they did not follow? Their variance and called for 58 parking spaces. They provided 25. I raised it when we were going through all of that DIS information, okay? And it hasn't been addressed. The okay. So well, my what I want is an answer. If in fact, they're in violation of a variance, can they submit a new application into this board? It's the same property. It's Doug, 416 Waverly. Doug. Yes. Michael said he didn't know he didn't think there was a problem, but he would do the research necessary to determine and he would get us that answer on or before the the meeting in November. Okay. So he will you your answer will be there. If he determines that in fact they can't, then it will be done. If he determines that, yes, they can proceed anyway, they just have an existing violation. And when we consider the variances, maybe we want to consider that, then we will consider that when we review the application. But going back to, so, so does that solve your problem, Doug? No, because I disagree with what Ashley said. It was raised during the DIS review, okay? It needed to be addressed in that DIS and the new DIS. 
it, they do address the existing and proposed parking in the DEIS. But they addressed it at 25, not 58. And they were to provide 58 parking spaces and they didn't. Okay, so they didn't correctly address it. So when we discuss with them the DEIS, one of the issues we will have is that they didn't address the issue correctly. So that's an issue for them to fix. Maybe that means we, their, their DEIS is not complete, Doug. It doesn't mean we can't review it and it doesn't mean we can't discuss it. It just means maybe they did oh. not do it com correctly and they have to revise some more. Well, and I'm, I'll go this way. I served on his board previous 10 years. No one was able to put an application when they had a violation in their variance initially granted. That is the question, whether they can do that or not. And that's the answer I am looking for. I think, yes. I think one of the questions is whether or not there's actually a formal violation on the property, if one was yes, ever issued. And, and the if answer, Doug, to your question is Michael's going to look at it. We don't know the answer today. So we're not going to make a decision today because we don't know the answer from no, a legal no, I, perspective. I, I understand, Robin, and I agree. But I think that we need that answer before we can proceed on this application. Fine. Fine. So Michael will figure it out. We'll know it by the November meeting. Um, and if it turns out that, in fact, they were supposed to provide 58, they only provided 25, and they don't discuss that discrepancy, that might be a reason that the revision is not complete. But on a simpler matter, because the date is very important, because we have how many days after it's submitted to review? You have 30 days. Because we only have 30 days to review after it's submitted. Therefore, mm -hmm. since it is not complete, then the October 14th date is no longer the correct date. And in fact, there has been no complete revision. No, we don't have to begin our completeness review since they did not submit what they were supposed to submit. Okay. All right. So, no, that's fine. So they, so no, if they're listening, please be advised that you did not submit the red line. We need to submit the red line. Now, we need to see the red line. So Ashley, I ask you the next question is, it, what happens if we don't give them their answer within 30 days? Um, you, you need, see the seeker clock says you need to make a determination of completeness within 30 days. So either and you can declare that it's incomplete or you can declare that it's complete. Um, if you declare it incomplete, then you need to provide the written list of why it's not complete, which could be based on the original letters that you, you last issued. Seeker does not require that you set a special, a special meeting. So if that 30 days falls in between two regular scheduled meetings, and when you get the document, for example, if, it, if we were counting the 14th, the, the 5th is only two weeks away, um, you, could at, you could have at the 5th said, you've only had it for two weeks, you're in the process of reviewing it, and you will make your determination at the first meeting in December. Okay, but now we have a different question, which is, let's say we don't make it at that, whatever that date is, whatever date we have to make our decision by, let's say we don't make it when we're supposed to. Do you know, does the statute say, do the rules say what happens? You know, a lot of things, if we don't do it, they're deemed, they're deemed approved or not approved. Is that what happens if we don't issue either a completeness or a not completeness memo within the required time. Uh, well, the, the law is silent on, on that point, so. Okay, so then, um, Michael, if you would, while we're doing this, check that too. This is a relatively new section of the law, so I'm not sure it's been tried in court yet. Okay, well then, We'll see if you can come with a conclusion. My guess would be if the statute doesn't say anything, then there's no, there's no, it's a, it's a, it's a law without any, uh, it's a, it's a requirement without any enforcement provision. And therefore, if we don't do it, we don't do it. So that would be the way I would interpret it. But Michael, I would let you double check that, please. All right. Does anybody, oh, Abby, yes, you look like you want to say something? Yeah, no, just a logistical question, Robin. So when we did this in January, this was a whole special meeting because it's huge. So does are we setting up another special meeting for this? I mean, should we? I'm, we could. 
If the board wants to have a special meeting for this, then the work session, for example, that we would have in November, we can set aside the work session to primarily discuss the DEIS. One thing I would say about the discussion is that I would recommend not having it as a public hearing when you're discussing the completeness aspects of the DEIS. Um, because it's it the public hearing on the DEIS is supposed to be once it's accepted as complete. And that way, at that point in time, the public would have copies of the DEIS. It would be available on the town's website or village's website. It would be available at the library. Um, it would be circulated to all the involved and interested agencies. If you were to have a public hearing on the DEIS at this upcoming meeting, uh, only the board will have had the opportunity to, to even look at the document. At that well, we're not actually having the public hearing on the on the revised DEIS. It's a it's a public hearing on the comp the applicant wanted to present um, present, and so uh, you know we said, said they filed this, and we said they could. I did not realize um, that, so I think there's no issue with having the applicant present it understanding that we have not made a completeness determination, and this is not the public hearing on the DEIS, and. Uh, therefore, the applicant present can speak at this, and when we discuss it, we will discuss it in the closed portion of the public hearing or at the special meeting, which will be part of the work session. So anyway, board members, what do you want to do? Do you want to discuss it at a work session? Do you want to start discussing it at the meeting on uh, in two weeks? Do you want to see how it goes and see how long that meeting lasts and if it lasts longer than some time or do you not, or you just want to set a meeting or what do you want to do? Anybody? It seems that, are we not getting any more applications before? Uh, correct. For November. So we don't yes. have a lot going on correct. in November. But we won't, we will only, we haven't gotten the red line yet. And I don't know when we're going to get the red line. So if we're only supposed to be commenting on the red line, uh, I mean, only on the, we're only supposed to be commenting on the changed portions, then we need the red line to know what we're supposed to be commenting on. And yeah, but the, the first, our first milestone is the completion. So we could decide that they don't have the red line and we could say, no, you didn't complete it. Isn't that true? That, that is we can not say a that too and just make that, we can make that decision now. Yeah, it seems, as long as we're absolutely certain that the red line is not there, that we didn't skip over it. Right, well, I, we, that's why we checked with Will. So we could do that now, or we could, because all that would mean is we say it's not complete, then in a week they submit it, or two days they submit it, whenever they submit it, and at that point it starts the clock. So I'm not sure that deciding it's not complete today is there's any point in doing that? Well, what I would, instead of saying it's not complete, which is a secret term, I would say that, that you did not receive the full we submission. Did. We did. I said that already. I said okay. therefore it's a, the October 14th date doesn't count. The, yeah. the date by which we receive the full submission will be the date that we get um, the red line in addition to what they've already submitted. So that's clear. We, we're not gonna, so our 30 days hasn't begun yet. So just, it hasn't begun. Um, so the question only, so I guess I would propose that we can start discussing it at, since there looks to be a short agenda, one never knows how long some of these public hearings take, but um, assuming it is a short meeting, then we can discuss it, we can at least begin discussing it at the meeting in the, you know, the, the, the board meeting in November, and then at that point, we can make a decision whether we want to hold a special meeting, i.e. use the work session for that, or whether we want to just discuss it in December. Uh, what do you think? Uh, no. What day is the November meeting? Is that the fifth? Yes. Okay. And December is the third? I don't have my calendar in front of me. Yeah, that's the first Thursday. Okay. Okay, because I can tell you my calendar and I'll be very honest, all right? Um, from the 23rd of October, all right? I mean, I will be available on the 5th, but from the 7th of November 
through the 22nd of December. I'll have to make arrangements because I will be away and I will have to make arrangements to attend the December 3rd ZBA meeting from where I am. Okay, well, we can, as I said, we can begin discussing it in November, but if we don't finish and if we don't, haven't gotten the red line yet, my guess is some of the board members may not have even done their review. I have lots of other things between now and the election to be um, perfectly honest, and I'm sure some other members of the board have things between now and the election. So I'm not sure that we will ha all have completed our review before the next meeting. And therefore we may need to continue the discussion into a special meeting. Um, and if you can't make it, Doug, we we'll, may have to do it without you. You'll just have to make sure you give us your comments either right. verbally, either orally at the next meeting or in writing. Um, right. So we have them. I, I, will, I will pass them along in writing. I have the, uh, the DEIS on a flash drive rather than a book and I'm going through it. So I will be able to provide my comments. Um, okay. Okay. Um, did anybody else have any thoughts or are you okay with what I, pr pr I proposed, which is we start the discussion at the November meeting, at the November, you know, th uh, fifth meeting. And then <coughs> if we want a special meeting, we'll decide then. Okay. I think that makes sense. I, I just have one request that um, when Michael does his research with respect to um, the issue that Doug brought up, if there's a relevant case um, for him to just forward it along so we can read the, the case law. Yeah, that I might think, be relevant. If I'm not mistaken. I don't want any memo, but just want to read the relevant case yeah. law. Greta, if I'm not mistaken, I, I think it's actually in the law that the ZBA cannot okay, then the relevant law. that's in violation. I'll attach okay. copies of any relevant cases or, or statutes along with my memo. Well, okay. we don't need a memo. Okay. Yeah, sure. We don't need a memo. Mm -hmm. We just need you to do the research and you can tell us at the hearing what your answer is. But what Greta is asking is if you based it on the case of X versus Y, that you send the case of X versus Y so we can all read it. There are several lawyers on the board. We all like to read those case decisions. Definitely. Okay, I'll, I'll have copies well, ready of everything. I'm glad, I'm glad you said that. I got a book for you to read. <laughs> okay. There was just one more thing I wanted to suggest to, to make sure that the document has been referred to the village engineer because they did an initial <coughs> review memo for the board. And well, then when- has it been review, Has it been, for, have been sent to the village engineer? No, it has not. So do you want it? So Ashley, should it be sent now? In, 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 considering as soon the fact as possible that it, to um, Brian Hildebrand at Keller Sessions did the initial review. Oh, I'm asking, should it be sent now considering the fact that it's incomplete or should it go as a complete document once it's complete? I, I think go ahead and send the clean copy now and then send the red line when it arrives. Okay. Um, and then in terms of, of when the red line gets here, I think it, it would be helpful if um, it, if the entire board was notified the date that they submit it and that it's stamped for the record. Okay. Got it. Okay. Okay, so we are, unless there's anything else on that, we're gonna move on. Okay, so now we've got two closed applications. Um, 308 American Avenue, which is Barkila. Can we close the public hearing? I guess we didn't discuss it. Any we did discuss it. We did discuss findings. I, I think we discussed findings. I think mm -hmm. for the rail, railroad, the, the modern on the rails, we discussed it twice now. I don't know why we're not getting. But this is not, this is not, oh, I'm not talking about that one yet. I'm talking about Barkila. So hang on a second, Meg. Okay, so Barkila, we definitely talked, it was closed last time. We talked right. about it. We talked about the office in the back. Doug was, um, right. really, you know, we talked about the music and all that. Right. We, we went at length about our findings. Right. Okay, so then we did. So Michael, do you have, so you have draft, um, uh, draft resolutions? 
Yeah, I sent I sent those to you prior to the meeting tonight okay. for uh, for 308 Mamaroneck, one station plaza and 131 Highview. Didn't we do 131 Highview already? Didn't we approve the? Yeah, we voted that first night we had it, but we never yeah. got the resolution. Oh, I see. Thank you. I thought we voted. Okay, uh -huh. thanks, Meg, for being a good. Michael, when uh, did you send the resolutions for? Uh, he didn't. What he's saying is, he just sent it to me. Usually, he sends them to me first, just to make sure they are at least consistent and make yeah. sense. And he forwards them to the board. At the last well, meeting, you had requested to receive them two weeks prior to the next meeting, which was today. Right. Okay. Well, I think shouldn't we like get them before this work session ideally so yeah but i think this is a new thing so in the future if we're going to have work sessions that we're going to discuss them at we're going to need them before the work session correct well, Robin, what kind what, what kind of turnaround can you do when you do the resolution? i usually do it in a couple I know days you're really busy i usually do it in a couple days and really i'm doing sort of in effect to make sure that at least it's correct that there's no glaring errors that i see in there i don't make any substantive changes of, you know if we discussed something but, make sure that that they will put in and that's all it's because it gets goes a lot faster than we have to if we don't have we can at least start with this correct you know if there's anything wrong in it those kinds of things well i guess um just so we have the we have time to look at the resolutions can we up the um time that you know yes. resolutions are sent to you within a week of the meeting you you look at it in a couple days and then we therefore have a good couple of weeks to look at it. Um, that's okay with me. If it's okay, you know, that's okay with me. I'm fine with that. I don't have a problem with. It. I'm happy to get it sooner rather than later. So, Michael, in the future, we're going to have we're going to change the time. We'll talk at the next meeting if we approve any resolution, if we discuss any resolutions that need to be drafted at the time. We will discuss the time frame, Greta. Okay, so that'll take care of it. We will mm -hmm. specifically discuss the time frame when we next vote or close a hearing and uh, have a proposed resolution. And hopefully, you know, you, you turn it around in a couple of days and then Michael can turn it around even in less time. A day, so that, right. Yes, so that we can then look at it. Yeah, okay. So that takes care of those two. The next item on the agenda is Administrative Action 1, which is the letter to the Village Board of Trustees. Now, I, I want to say at the beginning something, which is Will drafted a, a letter, Doug drafted a letter, Meg drafted a, le Meg drafted a letter. We really, I mean, this is sort of crazy to have three different letters. Which one are we editing? I would propose that in the future, we don't do this. I mean, I could have drafted a letter. I didn't want to draft another letter. Abby or Greta could have also drafted a letter. We could have had five, Doug could, oh, Doug did do one. We could have had five different, six different letters to be reviewing. And my guess is none of them are exactly what all the rest of the board members want. So in the future, when we have a letter, we have a draft letter and that's the letter we deal with in the, we have one draft letter and that's the letter we deal with at the meeting. And we make all the edits to that letter at the meeting rather than having multiple different drafts. Because um, are we gonna review Will's first and then Doug's and then Meg's? I mean, that doesn't make any sense. So I'm going to My, say, wait. since Will did the first one. I edited it and put my comments into it which I crossed out certain topics and I added my comments into that letter. So why so, don't we, right, we could, Meg drafted a whole new letter. I, so, but I could have done a red line, but it was just, his wills is so short. It's basically, I would have just crossed out wills and put my verbiage in there if you wanted me well, to do that. No, I don't, I, 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 don't want any, I don't want any of this. What I'm saying is this is crazy to have three versions of a letter. Well, actually there are more because I edited Meg's letter. That's right. So we would have, I, did you send it, did you circulate it, Greg? Because I didn't see it. I got um, I sent comments it to, today. No, no, yeah. you got Meg's today. You didn't get Greta's edits. Or did no, you oh, I did. I, I sent it, I sent it, I sent it, I sent Greta's as well. Okay, I didn't yeah. see Greta's. So we, in a sense, have have now four versions before us. Um, and Yes, but I edited, I used, I used Meg's um, letter as the last letter that was 
you yeah, know, I, I didn't like a lot of things. That was yeah, out. and I didn't like a lot of things in Meg's letter. So um, we can start with Meg's letter if you would prefer, which I no longer, which I don't have open. We can start with Meg's letter. I don't have your edits, uh, uh, Greta. If in fact you um, you sent them, I made a lot of. I made some. I made some edits, some organizational headings, but um, some substantive, especially in the first part. So. Um, we can start with Meg's letter if most of you have reviewed what? it. I, I reviewed what? it. Oh, oh God. I, ago, I did not see credits. Or we can start with Doug's, which is a lot shorter. Um, and, but what well, we can do is well, not do this so we don't have 20, yeah. you know, we don't have okay. multiple versions. Can I, can I just, May I can, make a suggestion? Yes. Why don't you take a look at all three letters that we, you, that are been done, okay? And uh, because I can tell you one thing, I toned, I toned William's letter down to the extent of I thought it was too strong to the board of BOT, okay? And I asked them to respectfully look at whatever our comments were. Why don't you, as an individual, take the three of us, three of us, you know, Meg's, Greta's, and my comments, okay? Look at it in terms of the original letter, put something together, Okay, and send it out to us, and we will use that as a basis. Can of, I? Okay. Go ahead. Because you know, I know, I know, Abby, there, Abby can, may have can, comments to that letter. Can I? Can I say that there were just remark upon substantive changes that we can all decide if we want to move forward or not before we get into actually editing anybody's letter. So I talk. definitely. I definitely added a, a few terms that were not in the original letter. So perhaps we could just all decide if we want those. If you want to cut those out, then cut those out. But we should decide as a board if we want to add any to this list. And then also, I know Doug brought up MDL. So perhaps we could just substantively decide what topics we would like in the letter, if we would like it to be the extra additional terms that I put in, and if you want to include some discussion of MDL that Doug did. Right. Well, I will say, I. I I just want to say that I do not think so. If we got, we had discussed very specific terms at that meeting. Those are the terms I want to put in this letter. If we want to give to the board a list of all the other terms in the uh, zoning code that we think need to be revised, then we can do that. But that's not what we discussed for this letter. And I don't want to add three things we want to discuss now when there's maybe 10 other things that I want to revise as well. So I'd like to keep this down to the original terms that we all discussed at that meeting and other, we can totally separately have a, you know, a decide that we, there are other things in the code that we want to be changed and we can consider all of those things, not just these particular ones. Could we take a vote on that, Robin? And also some of the terms that I added are, co are relevant to what that application was about. And so I don't know that we actually all came to a decision about those particular four. It was in talking about a particular application. There are a lot of people said, oh, it's ambiguous. We need help. It could be no. stronger. No. And you did not put in things like rumor and border. Um, I don't right. remember that we took a vote on which terms we were going to send to the ZBA about that application. Um, wow. And then I added, I'm sorry, and I added just a couple more um, that I know I can remember in the past, if you don't want to include it in the letter. But um, I would like to poll the board if they don't want to add in some other terms that confused us or that we as a board had a difference of opinion on when we were hearing the application. Okay, right. before and we do I that, will I will agree with hey. Meg. What? I will agree with Meg. We need, there are a number of definitions and clarifications in this code that need to be addressed for this board to make an appropriate decision. And Meg is right. There are a lot of areas that need to be addressed. Meg's areas need to be addressed. I think dwelling units need to be addressed, rumors, borders, whatever you wanna look at. We need to address those terms. If we don't have a clear and concise determination of what those terms are or what the board of trustees Thinks those, think those terms mean, how are we gonna make an effective decision? And you know, this went back and forth, left and right, in and out through the application because it is unclear from the village code to the multiple dwelling law, to the New York state building code, all the way down the line. 
So the fact of the matter is, I think we need clarification. And if we need other terms and definitions to be included in that letter, I think they need to be included. So I'm not stuck with four topics. I am okay. looking at what is in the best interest of the village and what is in the best interest of every board and commission that this village has to make an effective determination. That is where I'm looking at it. I don't want any ambiguity. A border is this, an apartment is this, a dwelling unit is this, but it has to be consistent. Right now, we do not have consistency across the codes. So. Um, okay, it's unlikely that you ever get consistency among all codes, but that's a different issue. Uh, well, I, I understand, say, but, you know, I, I want to say two possible. things. I have no problem if we, if we as a board, two things I want to say. First, if we as a board decide that we want to um, have a letter with a lot more terms, and I think that we should all go home, i.e. into the whatever room we do or whatever we're going home to these days, and think about all the terms that we might want to amend in the code and have them defined. And let's do that. And then we'll all come back with the terms we want to have defined. And either at the next meeting or the meeting after, whenever we discuss it, we will compile a list of those terms and submit those terms. I mean, we'll do a letter, but let's do it rather than discuss some and not all. So that's the first thing. The second thing I want to say is not everything has to be voted on. Well, a lot of times we don't vote because we just get a sense. Everybody nods their head or shakes their head or indicates they agree without an actual vote. Um, right. And I don't know that we want to put everything into an absolute recorded. I don't think it's necessary to do that. Uh, I think so. I, I said a poll. I suggest, a poll. I suggest that we not do anything right now. Everybody go back, think about all the terms they want to amend. Then we come back and put together a list of all those terms. Okay. okay. Abby, what do you think? I, I want to hear from Abby. I mean, I would like to see, I mean, I think from my perspective, there have been a lot of comments that I've seen in, in the letters. And what I would like is for Will to take the comments and provide a next draft for us to, to review. That would be my thought on that as a, as a way to um, manage this. But a lot of us, ha I haven't given any comments. You haven't given any comments on this. So anything he comes up with is not going to be reflective of everybody's comments. And I think, wait, wait, and to Doug's points, which is there are lots of terms, Meg said these are the terms that she was troubled with. I don't know, Greta, did you add new terms? When you edited, you said you edited. Did you add new terms? Yeah, I mean, I, um, I expanded upon the, um, I, I did add some new terms actually within the membership club section. Okay. Um, that that so, was my biggest focus. So yeah. it seems to me that given that everybody's adding terms that before Will changes anything, the real issue isn't but I, so Robin, but I respectfully disagree just in the sense that I feel like at this point it gets really messy and I would rather have something cleaner to look at and make my decisions based on. Well, but do you want to go home and look for other terms in the code, or do you want to have the terms as Meg and Greta have proposed them and just accept that or look for other terms? I want to. Well, look I want terms. no. I want to see them as Meg and Greta have proposed them and then review them, and possibly have other other terms. Yes, yes? but I yeah. I guess what I'm saying is I feel like at this point, before we do another round of edits. Uh, you know, just from a practical perspective that getting a kind of clean draft would be in everyone's benefit because then we can kind of review it with a clean slate. Okay, so why don't we take the letter that Meg drafted as edited by Greta. I have no idea what it is because I, I didn't see it. Um, and you don't want mine in there? Um, and if you can incorporate, I, I, I assume that, I assume that based on the, the original letter that Meg sent that your, your comments was sort of lost in the, in the what lost in the yeah I, I i deviated from doug we, he and i approached this differently so right. i wanted to bring up though that doug did want to discuss mdl and i wasn't for that but that should be put forth to the whole board because i could be in the minority there that other people wanted to talk about it so so no, why don't we why don't we take abby i have this so this is the proposal why don't we do this take the great 
Meg's letter as edited by Greta and with the inclusion <laughs> of the MDL language that Doug had originally proposed and used that as the basis for our discussion. Yeah, well, I defined other topics in there. Okay, so other topics. Because you're going to have I, to tell, Will isn't going to know what to do. So we need I to give you the I looked at I looked at the consistency of dwelling units, the definition of apartments, borders, rumors, and I forgot what else they called them. I also looked at, if you look at the laws that we have in place, the village code says you're entitled to two borders. The multiple dwelling law says you're entitled to four. Okay, these are inconsistencies within the code, and uh, these we, uh, have to be addressed. Uh, Doug, that but that's a term. Borders. Meg discussed, if I remember correctly, because I read your letter some time ago. Meg, if I remember correctly, and Meg, Greta, maybe since I don't know if Meg is there, but um, Meg here. raised you raised the border thing in your letter, didn't you? Yeah, yeah and I was pretty succinct. I simply said there's an accessory use says such and such. There's no standards or definitions. That's right. it. Yeah. So right. fine. So I think we should take, Will, if you would take Meg's letter as edited by Greta, put that into a clean document, circulate it, and we will start with that. And everybody at the next meeting, if we have, whenever we next discuss it, hopefully at the next meeting, if not the meeting after that, we will start from there and and do as we want with that letter based on the understanding that it's just a draft to work at as a base and is not anything more than that. Does that but work for, for right. everybody? But don't, you, but don't you think that when we're doing that, the Board of Trustees should understand that in one section of the code it's defined as this and in another section of the code it's defined as that, okay? Because that's what I did. But Doug, I'm not disagreeing with you. All I'm saying is Abby suggested that we have some letter to start as a base for. So I'm suggesting we use the letter that Meg drafted and Greta edited and that, so when we get that letter, you will say, okay, well, I'm okay with what she says, except that I wanna add these five things. And Abby will say, I'm okay with two thirds of that letter, but I want to add 10 other things and take uh, and do this. And I will say whatever I will say. And that's and if what I we'll already do. added things in, why do I need to do it again? My letter clearly defines things that I thought needed to be discussed, needed to be defined. And it also gave the definitions that were in the codes of the village. Will, do you think you can take Meg's letter as edited by Greta and add the points that Doug already made to that letter. Yes, yes, Fine. I will absolutely do that. Okay, so if you do that, we will use that as the base, again, on the understanding that it is just a base letter and anybody can add, subtract, and do whatever they want with that letter, including deciding if we do, that the letter doesn't work at all. I'm not saying it doesn't, but just so we know what that is. If we could mm -hmm. decide that, Really, you know, we'd want to approach it very differently. We can do that too. And if we like it, then we'll leave it with whatever we want to add or take out. Okay, so if you would do that, please, Will, we can go from there. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, next item is the amendments to item two under administrative actions, which are amendments to the uh, village code related to fees charged in lieu of dedicating parkland. I had no comments on that. Did anybody have any comments on that? Well, just a minute. Let me, we're going fast now. Let me get to, I think I had a comment. I have to pull up my, my notes. Sorry, I'm getting there. You switch gears. Does anybody else have a comment while we're waiting for Meg to get there? Yes, I don't <laughs> think we should have fees for dead for, in lieu of parking. I think that not they, parking, park dedicating park parkland. Oh, dedicated parkland? Uh, no, I don't have any comment on that one. Okay, hold. I'm so sorry. I'm getting there. Um, let's see. My real thoughts are this is really not within our purview. I Whether or not there are that. fees in lieu of in lieu of dedicating parkland, it's not. You know, we, it's not within our purview. I think. I also don't. You know, I was going to leave. No. Anyway, that was my thought. Um, no, okay, so, no, but I was just talking about how it's written in case somebody had to give a variance or something. 
just if I wasn't talking about the policy, I, I think that's beyond our purview. I wasn't thinking about whether it's applicable or not. But when I got to uh, section two, and there's a table in there because it provides for a reduction if you have fair and affordable housing. So there's a table where it says twice type of dwelling unit and then the percent that you get off for it. So the concept is fine and I'm not arguing, I'm not trying to, to weigh in on the policy of, of those percentages. What confuses me is that the descriptions of the dwelling unit don't match the defined terms in the code. Um, for instance, there's fair and affordable housing units. There's nothing that's a fair and affordable rental housing unit. There are fair and affordable housing units that are for rent and they have additional characteristics to the one that's in that table. So I was just bringing up the fact, if somebody wanted to argue, I think you're wrong about this, or, or um, I don't think that my apartment relates to that description, we have a discrepancy between how they're described in this table to how these things are defined in the terms. Okay. So I think there should be consistency. So, okay, that's a good point. Why don't we write a letter from the board saying we have no comment on the policy. We do want to point out that the terms in this law are not consistent with the terms as they exist in the village code. Yeah, and specifically it's section two in the table is right in a table um, that the descriptions it's because I think the whole purpose of the revision was to give these percentages to the fair and affordable housing. I think otherwise this law exists. This was just adding that you can get a reduction in this uh, requirement if you have the fair and affordable. Um, so it's that section two in the table, the description of the fair and affordable housing units or the rental housing unit in which annual rent at application is such and such. I don't understand why it's not matching up to the defined terms. Thank you. Okay, so why don't we send a letter that says simply that? Okay. If you would, um, if that works for everyone, some nods would work. Abby, grant us some nods or thumbs up works. Okay, good. So why don't we do that? Um, Will, if you would do that. Okay. Now the next item is uh, the amendments to the village code related to setbacks from water bodies. I have lots of comments. I don't know about the rest of you, but I have lots of comments on that. I have some comments, but why don't you go? Um, uh, so, okay, so we start with section five of the proposed law, which is an amendment to section 240-5 of the code. Um, okay, any projects or physical activities such as construction or other activities that may affect the environment by changing the use, appearance, or condition of any natural resource or structure that is directly undertaken, funded, or approved by an agency. I'm not sure that's, I mean, those are terms from the secret statute. Um, uh, I'm not sure. I, 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 I read this when we first got it weeks ago. And so my notes are a little bit unclear. Um, and so I'm hoping that I can remember. I wrote the, sec, the exceptions are not within the approval. So that is not what anybody is approving. And we talk about agencies of the village of Mamaroneck, but the village of Mamaroneck website talks about them as departments. So I'm not sure if they're agencies or departments of the village. Is the Department of Buildings an agency of the building of the village, or is it a, a department? If we need to confi confirm that. Then under B, um, it talks about replacement, rehab, or reconstruction on the same site, including upgrading buildings. It needs to be added, provided there is no change in footprint or other changes to the on exterior envelope of the building. Then in G, it says something and not involving a change in zoning. I would assume that means a change in the zoning code. I don't know otherwise what a change in zoning is. So it needs to specifically say a change in the zoning code. So this would be a building that is, pretty, so it was a, would be, um, and, and otherwise in accordance with the zoning code. Then in H, it talks, it says, including expansion of existing facilities by less than 10,000 square feet of gross floor area. But uh, the mere fact that you are expanding for less than 10,000 square feet, depending on where that expansion is, that could be, it could, could be significant in a flood zone. You can have a very small expansion that could be significant if it is on the ground floor, if you're doing something different, if you're increasing the amount of 
ground floor surface, even if it's 5,000 square feet, that's a lot more significant than if you're increasing it on the by adding another story of 9,000 square feet. So I think that has to reflect the fact that it really has to go to whether or not it's in the flood zone and where the 10,000 square feet are. Um, in K, I have a note something about the 50 foot buffer. I think we need to make clear that the, this is exceptions to when um, action does not include, and it says extension of any of these facilities. It said, but remember if it's within the 50 foot buffer, we may be concerned about it. Okay, and then we go to section five. Um, section five is just, I'm sorry, section six. It says section 240-30 of the Code of Mamaroneck is amended as follows. It really has to say whether or not we're deleting language. You can't just say a section of the code is amended. Are we amending it by adding this? No, we're amending it by revising the language. So there needs to be a black line so that people can see what's being changed. And it should say something to the effect that um, is amended by deleting the following and adding the following new language. When uh, in the substance of 240-30 in subsection A2, it talks about construction which causes normal maintenance or the replacement in kind of any existing building. Um, but it, it says, but it talks about enlargement. It needs to say that it is within the same footprint, same envelope, same size, does not increase the size of the building or have a greater impact or something like that on the flood zone. Um, I had other comments and I can't actually figure out what I wrote. So I'm gonna leave those. Uh, Meg, you wanna go with your comments? Um, I have just one comment, but can I ask, cause I have this habit, which I don't think is a bad habit of going to the public portal and looking at the amendments there to find my documents. I use that as my repository. I can't find what you're reading there. <laughs> to tell you the truth. So maybe I'm just really I have, dippy. I here. have proposed local law as Will circulated it to the board at least a month ago. Okay, so w it's hard to go back a month and all. So I always assume it's gonna be attached to our agenda. So mm -hmm. I did not realize. So I have no I, idea I if it was attached to the agenda. I have the one that he circulated. They should be the same. I understand, saying, I got it. I are got you it. saying one that is on the the uh, that is attached to the agenda is not the same as the one that we got sent or something else. I'm not sure I, I understand what. Yes, but well, you see, at this point, I don't go back to check. I made an assumption that it would be the same, so I don't right. mean to not do the work to go and look at what was distributed. But when it's like a month later, and I'm just no, looking, that's fine. You know. I don't have a problem with that. I'm just trying to understand. So, so I don't know if it's the same or not because I'd have to compare it to. Now I have to go back in my emails and find what was distributed and compare it. Well, wait, but oh, you're I'll saying, send it again. But wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Meg, you're saying that what you just looked at, I don't mean just, I mean, whenever you looked at it, you looked at the one that was attached to the agenda today? Or Yeah, about, yeah. And, and some of the sections that I'm discussing are not in there? Or Yeah, yes. Okay, then that's a problem. And we need to find out where, and I'm not saying... That, that, that you should have looked at this one. That should have been fine because they should have been the same. And if right. they're not the same- And, and, I, I, and, and I, I want to have a caveat problem. that that's what appears. I went to the agenda, I click on the agenda, I go to the documents and this is, you know, I didn't find it. So, but if somebody wants to correct me that I don't know where to look or something, but that's that seems to be the case. Okay. I'm looking at amendments to village code related to setbacks from water bodies. Right, so, but you're saying, so you have, so, um, does any, did anyone else, did anyone else have any comments before we hi, hang on one second, Meg, I want to just, does anyone yeah. else have any comments? And if so, do you have comments to what was on the agenda today or what we will originally circulate? And if we're I, not, I, I actually the, have one comment to what I did find on the agenda documents. Okay. Um, um, okay so yeah, why okay. don't you go with that? So I see 342-89 jurisdiction, section 89 jurisdiction. 342, sorry, I'm looking to see 342. It's a separate, it's a separate piece of paper on the, on the oh, public. Oh, I have a jurisdiction. We have it. It's at the end. Okay. And so a paragraph was crossed out and a new paragraph put inside. 
Yeah, I don't have the paragraph crossed out. I just have the new paragraph, but go ahead. Okay. Um, so, um, of the village, I'm sorry, I'm reading my notes here. Um, um, it talks to about the village board. Hereafter be referred to it by law or the village board. Is that meant to be the board of trustees? Yes, okay. I can answer that's meant to be the trustees. Okay. Um, also- uh, So wait a minute, hang on. Yeah. That is yeah. a point. If, if the, we should change that to be, the law should be changed and that would be an additional comment to make clear that it's the board of trustees so no one else has that confusion. Okay. And then the next sentence starts, the following provisions relating to, um, don't limit any power conferred by law by the Board of Appeals. I would want to say this and the following provisions, this jurisdiction provision and the following provisions relating to its powers and duties shall not be deemed to limit any power conferred by law upon the Board of Appeals. Rather than just the ones that are following, I would say it's the immediate paragraph and any following. Okay. 34289, just going to look at it so we know what it's talking about. Oh, I thought it was okay. Mm -hmm. So that does it. So it, it looked like just looking at this, that's that looks like that's the same sentence. That, that, it is the same. It hasn't been changed. Right. But, but still, I'm reading it now. And it just says the following provisions. Um, and we're talking about jurisdiction. Um, and it's talking about by this chapter, chapter 240. I would just want this art it to be clear that even this paragraph that we're reading right now, this and the following provisions relating I don't think to the it to, I don't think it needs to say that. I said, the board shall have exclusive jurisdiction of all matters that the law says it is and of anything given by the village board. They can't have any more. So the following provisions which discuss variance and discuss powers and duties and what it shall do in interpretation, those are sort of explanations of the powers that it have and that's why it's necessary. I don't think anything, I don't think it needs to be changed. Well, it says we'll have jurisdiction prescribed by a certain section of the village law. Yes. Or by this chapter, which is all the board. The board only has jurisdiction of what the village law says it has, what this chapter says it has, or what the village, what the board of trustees says it has. The, the ZBA has no other powers. It has no other jurisdiction. The rest of, set of Article 13 then talks about different things and how the board shall act. So it's all of right. those I things. I, under, I get the gist of it. I just get the gist of it. It's just whether or not there's any limiting matter in this particular paragraph that you would say this and the following. I don't, think, it, I, I don't think it's needed. So that's my, my view. So I, I don't agree that we need to. I am not, I am not strongly wedded to this, but that, I felt that way. But I don't, I don't think it's going to come up often, but I just, uh, I just didn't know why it wouldn't say this and the following provisions. But. Because the first one isn't delimiting, it's just saying, well, we have all the power that the law says we have, whatever the law is. That's what that first sentence says. So there's nothing in there that could be said to limit because it says- well, you have by the village law. Is there no, are there no precepts? Is there nothing given by the state that talks about- That zoning? is the village law. The village law is New York state village law. Village law section 7-12 is section seven of the okay. New York so state- Perhaps you could say, just for clarity's sake, I understand that, Robin. It could say New York state village law. I know it's right. that section, but it does not define- yeah, the, 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 Village law is, is a defined term. Both, I wanna just point out that village board and village law are defined terms. In the code? In the code. So then we've done. So then we don't need to make any change on either of those two. Okay. Yeah, there it is. But then the, the board, the board should say the village board and use that defined term. So then the correct, it is correct the way it's written. Except so the I'm board. Sorry, so, 
is the, defined, is the defined term of village law, New York State village law? Yes. How is it defined? Yes. It is defined yes. as, you have it in front of me, I'll open Chapter it up. It is okay. Hard. okay, thank you very much, everybody, for your clarification. Thank you. Thank you. I pre appreciate it. Okay. And so I think that's what we should do. So, Will, if you would go back and so you have my comments on what I have. And again, they weren't necessarily that coherent because my notes are so old. Um, by the time I wrote them, I knew what I meant. I'm not so clear that I know what all of them mean now. Um, so, Will, if you would please check what you circulated and what was on attached to the agenda today, because if they're not, at a minimum, they're not the same because Meg is saying something was crossed out and the one I have has nothing crossed out. It's just a clean copy. Um, and so they're definitely different. So yeah, I think I got a couple of red lines, but not the complete thing. It's not, you know, it's not I got it. It's what's posted publicly. No, no, I understand yeah, that. Yeah. No, I understand that. I'm just saying the one that he circulated doesn't have those red lines. Yeah. Um, so I think, so I have some comments, but I think given that, um, if you would please, Will, check what is attached and what was circulated. Circulate a clean copy or a, a red line copy, circulate something to the board members so we all have the same thing. And then we can discuss this further at the meeting in no, on November 5th, because it sounds like we've all had some confusion and we have to make sure we know. What we you talking. have your, your comments were uh, very good, Robin. Do you have them written down somewhere to, to distribute? So when I go to look, I don't have to say the same. Unfortunately, they're not that. Let me see if I can make sense out of what I wrote. In other words, as I say, they're a little. They're just handwritten comments, you know. Yeah, I just think it would advance. You know, like when I go to look at, it, it's like, oh yeah, Robin was right. Then just. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll serve. I'll I'll make up. I'm not going to type. I'm not going to because I think it's not a word word document. I think it was a PDF, but I will make a better handwritten set of notes and then circulate that so you can. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, okay. Anything else? on this by anybody else otherwise we'll just take it up on november 5th i do yeah i do want to just say in you know, looking at the red line for this that um i feel like a lot of it's very vague so you know it, I, I think if i'm looking at the right thing you know saying requiring a landscape plan demonstrate the bank uh is stable i think i just feel like there we need harder metrics in here okay. so how how are we gonna like we can just debate forever what demonstrating the bank of the, co the of the coastal shoreline is stable means you know can you make a list comments, of those so terms we can we can we can add some we can re request that it be amended to add some standards yes for some of the terms. exactly but it might be helpful if you would identify specifically which ones you found vague Okay, um, so the I don't mean right now because we're going to do this again next. You know, if you, could, <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> but I'm in the zone, Mag. Come on. Okay, okay, okay. I'm not <laughs> taking <laughs> notes. I'm not taking notes right now. I was hoping <laughs> you. I don't know that. I don't. I, I think it's more important that Amber and or Will are taking notes. Yeah. they're the ones that are going to have to put it in a letter. Okay, um, okay. Then go go at it. Then okay. So okay. you could go. You could go ahead as long as you've got them now. Okay, so yeah, just like require a landscape plan that talks about native plantings. That's great, but you know, beyond not like, I just feel like there should be, as you said, Robin, more of a standard of what does that, what does the landscape plan like? I don't know, are there measurements or standards like something? Because again, it's vague. Like I could say, oh, a landscape plan, I'm going to plant one native shrub and it's gonna, you know, fulfill that requirement. Like, what does that mean? Demonstrate that the bank of the coastal shoreline is stable and will remain stable after development to the satisfaction of the planning board. Again, that strikes me as very vague. Like it could be like, hey, we walked on the bank of the coastal shoreline. We think it's fine. Planning board, don't you agree? Like, I, you know, like should, there should be an, an, a required analysis by, an engineer, something, something along those lines. I'm just saying that these are very vague. Well, I think, 
I think some of them are vague because as long as they say to the satisfaction of the planning board, because each one could be different depending on the situation. For example, let's take a landscape plan, which is easy. A landscape plan that looks like one thing may be appropriate in one scenario, but a, in a different scenario, a completely different kind of landscape plan. So I think as if it's all to the satisfaction of the planning board, then the planning board can use its best judgment. For something like stability, we can say as confirmed by an engineer would be the language that I would say. I don't think it's appropriate for us to give some of those standards because we don't necessarily know what is right. I would think at most what we should do is give the body that should be determining the satisfactory. So like as certified by a licensed engineer would be a way to test the stability issue. Exactly. No, that would, that would be- That would be a exactly. civil engineer. Uh, sorry, whichever the appropriate engineer is a civil engineer. Right. Right. Okay, so okay. then that would be the language that should be added. Right. Yeah, and then there's a uh, incorporate any other requirements to minimize the environmental impact of the development in the 50 foot buffer area again, like to the satisfaction of, you know, Ooh. the the engineer, there's nothing in that, you know, it's just very, again, it's just vague to me. Yeah, but you know, I, I mean, is it got to be to the satisfaction of the engineer? This plan? No, not to the, sorry, it's not. But as you know, like have there's got to be something more in there. You know, it's just I agree. Very ended to me. All right, no, so think about if it's enough to so with the with the stability that should be an engineer because that's the one who's going to measure stability. Right. Uh, for the other, other so between now and the next meeting, right when we actually discuss some more of this again. Maybe you should think about maybe either what that should be a little bit, I mean, and maybe we just want to say some more definite, but think about whether we want to just say something more definite, something more clear, or whether we want to come up with something more specific. But remember, we don't want to make say what it should be because we're not the experts on it. Right. No, and, and I'm not saying that. I'm saying, say this. right, it's kind of leaving it up to us and that's not, you know. Okay. Need, the term engineer is vague. No, no, license. civil engineer is fine, Doug. No, we can license put, engineer. I said, I said license, didn't I say? Okay, I, I, I don't, yes. I don't, I don't recall. Robin. But it has to. I agree. It has to be a licensed engineer. Right, and and uh, you know, to Abby's point, you know, the engineer is going to certify the soil, okay, and and, and uh, the ability of the soil to withstand, but who's going to cert certify the impact? And that's one of the uh, topics that Abby wrote, uh, raised. So who's going to certify the impact on, on the encroachment? Is that going to be the planning board? Um, is that going to be the BOT? Abby, you know, which section? Can you give me the specific session? I want to just look at it. What section are you talking about? This is like at the very end of 342. 76. So if you go to the end, this is where all of the new red additions, this is what I'm assuming are. Again, I don't have the red, so I just look. Oh, there's only five. There's only four, th five things in there. Yeah, there are only five things, but that's, you know. Someone needs the accountability to certify it. Oh, wait, I don't know. Um, I don't know that anyone, there, I don't know that there's any one job, let's call it job, profession that can, I mean, you can have an environmental engineer look into the environmental impact and maybe that's what we need, an environmental engineer. Yeah, that makes sense to that me. That makes a lot of sense. That would be the appropriate thing for that last one. Okay, so that's what we need for that one. Mm -hmm. Okay, anybody else now? Otherwise, again, we'll take it up once we have what we're looking at. Okay, so then we will discuss this further at the meeting at our meeting in November um, and Will will circulate that and Will has what we talked about today, but we'll, and I'll send out my, uh, what my edits with, in a way that reads comprehensive. 
um, that reads uh, that reads well. That you guys can all read it. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. The next item on the agenda then is are the minutes. No, I think you missed the tree law, right? Oh, I'm sorry. I did miss the tree law. Uh, tree law. Anybody have any comments on the tree law? It, we already discussed this. Is that because is there now a draft up there? Is that it? We discussed it. Yeah, so that's what happened. I, I still have. I still have. I still have to send um, my comments to Will, and I will commit to do that within the next couple of days. Fine. Okay, that's where we were. Um, I thought. Okay, so you'll do that, and then we'll make a final decision. I, yeah, I promise. They'll make a decision mm -hmm. at the meeting on in on November fifth. Okay, Greta, you know that you're no longer visible, just making sure you know, because we've had problems. There. Yeah, I mean, somehow I, I don't know why I lost. Somehow I, um, see if I can get back to it. Okay, just making sure. I didn't want it to be that you kind of, you know, didn't. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you're back. Okay. Um, okay, so now we are on your yep. minutes. Minute, approval of minutes. Anybody have any additional comments on those minutes? I'm since I said all my comments in already, I have nothing else. Okay, then how about if we vote to approve the minutes as revised? Okay. I'll make a, make a motion. motion. Yeah, go ahead, make oh. a motion, Meg. You can oh, make a motion. Madam, yeah. Uh, excuse me, Madam Chair. Um, Perhaps because this is a work session, perhaps you would want to do that at the actual public meeting on the 5th. If you think we need to, we'll wait till the public meeting on the 5th to do that. Can I, can I ask what kind of changes you made? Um, because the document that we have isn't redlined. Is it I sent them changes? No, they were all, I, they, I sent them, you know, back in uh, like July, but they were, none of them were substantive. They were oh. corrections. Wrong okay. person was identified, okay. or there were typos, or gotcha. it, one place it said it in one way, and another place it said it in another way, things like that. So it wasn't just like typos, gotcha. some of them were a little okay. bit more than that, but nothing substantive. I didn't change which is what happened. Okay. Okay. So, fine. So nobody has any comments. We will vote on them and approve them on November 5th. Okay. Is there anything else that anybody wants to discuss? Um, Oh, before we go there, I have two things. One, work sessions. I think this is a good idea. It, you know, back, certainly it, it helps hopefully keep down meeting, make meetings shorter, and we can see how this happens, if it really does or doesn't. But I think, um, so if everyone agrees that it might, that we should continue it at least for now and see the effect of it on the meetings on the meetings themselves and I would say we should schedule a date for the um, work session on November in November which may be harder because of Thanksgiving so there's fewer days um, and that work session then will either include a discussion of the as well as anything else it will either include a discussion of the uh, revised DEIS or it won't. So anybody has thoughts on, on, on days? Will did you, sorry, I'm getting my calendar. Will did you look at possible dates we could have this work session? Well, um, I'm sorry, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, away. Who said something? Yeah, I, um, if I have internet service where I am, I may join, okay? okay? But like I said, from the 7th of November through, I'll have to make arrangements for the 3rd uh, of December to get to the meeting, but actually up to the 22nd of December, I am very limited in time because I, I, I will be away. 
Okay, well, we ho well, hopefully you'll be able to make it. So, but in the meantime, just we'll, we'll pick a day anyway. Hopefully you'll be able to make it. Will, what days did you have as, uh, what days are possible dates for us because of all the other meetings? Uh, looking at the calendar right now, uh, November 24th. I can't do a Tuesday ever, so. Um, uh, um. This is probably not the best date because it's it's kind of close to the meeting, but absent that, uh, how about uh, Monday, November thirtieth? Um, I'm not sure. There's a, I mean, it would just to me. I'd rather if we're going to have two the same week. I'd rather just have a longer meeting. So I don't see the value of having a meeting on November thirtieth. Um, Meg, Greta, Abby, thoughts? Yes. Is there any time the, the week of the sixteenth? That's possible. I mean, there's, you could do the 16th. I don't think anybody, because there's the environmental committees on the 17th staff uh, attends that. The Harbor Coastal Commission meeting is on the 18th staff attends that. And the BAR meets on the 19th. So if you want to have your work session on the 16th, that would be okay. Uh, the only other date really is the 20th, but I don't think anybody wants to meet on a Friday. So the 16th is okay for me. Greta and Meg, is that okay with you? Meg, Greta, and Abby. Yes. Yeah, it's okay with me. Abby? I'm just looking at my calendar. Hang on a okay. second. Okay, Meg, while you're looking, Meg? Yes, it's good for me. Okay. Yeah, it's okay for me. Okay, so we will tentatively set it for, so we'll set it for the 16th and hopefully Doug will be able to make it. And if he can't, we'll, we'll no, count it. Agree. You know, Internet access where I'm going to be is very limited. Well, we're not really voting on anything at the meeting. All we're doing is discussing. So, um, as long as you're so anything we do discuss at that meeting, we will then be effectuating at the public hearing on in on December third. So you know, I can potentially hopefully you'll be able to make it. But it's not like we're gonna we're we're. I can potentially call in. Doug, where are you going? What? Where are you going? I am going to watch the leaves turn colors. Oh, very nice. I'm going to be uh, upstate. Unfortunately, what they call internet access is DSL, and it's totally dependent on phone service. So I hate to tell you this, it would be absolute total slow motion. I mean, I can tell you what, my cell phone hotspot works better than the internet up there. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. I'll, uh, if I can, if not, I'll, I'll try to call in. Okay, does anybody else on the board have any, anything else they wanna to discuss today at the work session? Or will, or is there anything else that you wanna raise at the work? Or Amber, is there anything else you wanna to raise today? Otherwise, I think we can adjourn. Yeah, oh, yeah. The one comment I have is our next meeting on the back of the page should read November 5th. What did he say? Not December 3rd. Oh, he's yeah, he prepared this for, with for assuming this was the same agenda that we were going to have at the oh, okay. meeting. Right. So it's it's no, like it a, it's a like a draft of the exactly. November agenda. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. The only other thing I would suggest is uh, I know we we talked today about the uh, the scheduling the next work session, but if if we could standardize your work session for the year for uh, 2021, I think that would be helpful for staff in terms of uh, staff being able to manage staff's day to day um, um, administration of the various boards. So okay, that would be something you... to consider. Now I have to talk about it tonight, but. You know, maybe either at your either at your meeting or at your next work session. Something okay, can you? You know, I, I, I'll give you a comment on that. I think the week before our meeting is probably the best time to hold any type of work session. It's very similar to what the board of trustees does. So, so Will, if you would look at the calendars, right? Because you have all the official dates of when you know all the various boards. If you would look at the official calendars and start using Doug's guide of the week before, 
um, if you would check the dates, the days that would be available on a general basis the week before, um, and if not, then two weeks before, but starting with that, certainly not any sooner than that, because it has to be at least after all the applications, the application dates and all the applications are in. Um, Fair enough. And then the only other thing is, uh, you know, we'll, we will put that together, send that to the board. Does the board want to vote on that? Or is the board, how does the board want to handle uh, solidifying those dates? I don't think we need to vote. I think we'll discuss it and we'll reach yeah. a general approval. Fair sure. enough. Because I think everybody can have to check their calendars to see availability on those days. Yeah. Fair enough. And we're all going to have to, and we're going to have to pick a date that hopefully is available to everybody. And if there's some meeting, you know, one member who can't make a particular meeting, then that member can't make a, you know, and that'll just, but if, you know, if some member can't make the first, the Thursday before, then we can't do it. Then it has to be something that at least on a general basis, all five members can make. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. See, Robin, I am going to make the debate so I could watch the fight. It's 15 rounds, <laughs> okay? And I think there's six minute rounds. So they're gonna be there for 90 minutes. I'm just curious who's gonna be left standing after that. I'm just excited right, well, I guess we'll to get the microphones, right? Uh, they can I, cut them off okay. this time. So are we ready to adjourn? I think so. Absolutely. Okay. I uh, motion to, do we need motion to adjourn? I second. Got one. Okay, everybody, I assume, uh, shake your head, nod if you're okay. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, this meeting is adjourned. See you on November 5th. Yep. <laughs>